Hey, what's going on? People, in this video we're going over the best items for Amara in Borderlands 3. From assault rifles to pistols and class mods to artifacts, this is the must-have gear that will have you dominating the Borderlands as Amara the Siren. We start with Assault Rifles, opening up with the Rowan's Call, a legendary elemental Jacob's Assault Rifle, which can only be obtained by defeating Red Rain at the end of the Slaughter Star 3000. The Rowan's Call is great for Amara thanks to its raw elemental power, coupled with its unique effect. Landing criticals with it not only returns two bullets to your magazine, but ricochets two bullets at nearby enemies, and those ricochets deal splash damage. With Indiscriminant, those ricochets become even deadlier, and it has more than enough damage to go around. Next up, the Blade Fury, which can only be obtained as part of the Director's Cut from the Bunker Master's Bolt Card. The Blade Fury is one of the most busted guns in the game, and Amara goes a long way to being responsible for that. You see, this gun is similar to the Face Puncher, but it doesn't only deal melee damage. It also deals splash damage, although at no radius, and that enables us to apply elements to it. With so many skills that increase melee damage, like Find Your Center or Illuminated Fist, the latter also converting the melee portion to our attuned element, we shouldn't be surprised at the outrageous amount of damage this thing can conjure up. It comes in both a multi palleted Masher variant and a fully auto Gatlin variant, and for Amara, Gatlin is best. For SMGs, we'll start with the Crit, a unique weapon obtained from Moxie's bar. All you need to do is send her some crypto and she might forward you one. The Crit always comes in shock, has built in lifesteal, and provides 150% bonus crit damage to boot. It's one of the most damaging weapons in the game and is well suited to Amara. Amara can use skills like Tempest to get the maximum amount of shock damage out of it. And she can even use something like Infusion to convert a portion of its damage into another element. That allows her to make one of the most deadly weapons in the game even more versatile, ensuring that there's no battlefield you won't conquer. Now to the Flipper, another Meliwan SMG. This one comes in all elements, belongs to the Bounty of Blood, and can be farmed for by defeating Minosaur around here in Blood Sun Canyon. The Flipper is a weapon that is much more deadly than it first appears, with its ability to fire an extra 8 projectiles if you hold down the trigger for long enough. Each of those 9 projectiles have the ability to proc indiscriminate, which turns it into a machine while mobbing. You'll see projectiles fly out at all angles, damaging your enemies and causing absolute carnage. The last SMG I can recommend for Amara is the Plasma Coil. A weapon exclusive to Arms Race, dropping most often from this chest room. The Plasma Coil fires blistering volleys of projectiles that hit like a truck. On Amara, those projectiles will bounce around the arena like nothing else, causing absolute havoc, and with From Rest to reduce charge time, they come thick and fast. It is locked to the radiation and shock elements, but Amara is able to bring more flavors to the party and it's a gun that works wonders in her hands. To Sniper Rifles, and I'll recommend The Root. This one belongs to the Bounty of Blood DLC, dropping from Lanny Dixon, who you fight around here in Ashfall Peaks. The complex route fires in a two round burst, causing light shows to erupt from the impact points. They dazzle in place for a second before exploding and dealing high damage. Because it has to be charged before it can be fired, From Rest does a lot in increasing its DPS, and Indiscriminate will have light beams appear all over. However, you need to be aware of them because they will down you when given the chance. To pistols now, and the Psycho Stabber is made for the Siren. This one can only drop from Borman Nates, you fight around here in the Meridian outskirts. The Psycho Stabber will have your enemy saying Keskese whenever you shank them with it, thanks to its massive boost in melee damage, providing a potential 340% increase. With it in your hands, Amara's power of the punchy will grow to new heights, 
enabling her to do absolutely ridiculous things. The Free Radical is another pistol you must have on Amara. This one belongs to the director's cut, dropping from Beef Pliskin around here in Karas Canyon. Again, the Free Radical is a weapon locked to the shock element, but that doesn't stop it from dealing enormous amounts of damage. Amara can increase that damage further thanks to her elemental focused abilities, and because it also deals splash damage, skills like Arms Deal and Heavy Rain increase it further. It's not like it needs it though, able to zap enemies off the face of Pandora before they even knew they were born. Last for pistols is the Light Show, which comes in all elements including none, and drops as part of the Bounty of Blood DLC from Lazodactyl. You can find around here in the Obsidian Forest. The Light Show fires four projectiles in a circular pattern that rip through targets, and for indiscriminate proccing for each of those four projectiles makes it even deadlier while mobbing. If it had a weak point, it would be in its reload time, but with skills like fast hands, Amara can reduce the downtime and increase the damage time, making it an even greater force to be reckoned with. Onto launches, and it's hard to look past the Kick Charger, which drops as part of Arms Race, and this chest room is your best bet. The Kick Charger is a weapon that deals obscene amounts of damage, and only consumes the one ammo to do it. You can charge it up to max out its damage, or simply slide to have it fully charged, and it will also penetrate enemies. That penetration couples well with Indiscriminate, where those projectiles ricochet anyway. Whether mobbing or bossing, this gun has it all, and when specced into Remnant, that overkill damage has those orbs hitting like houses. If you're looking for a good base game launcher, the Backburner is great for bossing, and the Plague Bearer has the mobbing field covered. The Hellwalker is a shotgun you just have to have. It has an increased chance to drop from Road Dog, you can find chilling out around here in the Splinterlands. The Hellwalker is a flaming shotgun that'll blaze a path through any challenge. Increasing your mag size buff over 50% will have you firing twice before reloading, and you can increase its reload speed massively with the reload stack anointment. I think most players would agree that the Hellwalker is almost as fun as it is deadly. The Guardian Angel is another shotgun you'll want to have, dropping as part of the director's cut from the Fallen Heroes Vault Card. The Guardian is a great weapon to hold in your hands and see your damage skyrocket. As it increases all of your damage sources by up to 500%, the further away from your enemies you are. It perfectly couples with Phase Flare or Amara's other action skills, or even a fish for that matter, allowing you to take them to new heights. Last for shotguns is the Face Puncher, a unique weapon dropping from Moldock the Anointed you can find around here in Floodmore Basin. The Face Puncher is a weapon that fires mini Bruce Lees, causing it to deal only melee damage, and a lot of it at that. With so many melee focused skills and unique interactions, the Face Puncher becomes god tier in the hands of the Siren. There's really only one weapon that can conjure up similar types of madness, and if you're looking for peak damage, you'll want one with the redundant prefix. For grenade mods, it's hard not to recommend its purse, which can only be dropped by Sloth, you fight around here in Conrad's Hold. Its purse is great for when you're after more damage, as any enemy that's been caught in the blast will get covered in Skag Juice, causing them to take 20% increased damage for 6 seconds. Bottom line is, this thing is great for giving your weapons extra oomph. Another must-have grenade mod for Amara is the Fish Slap, which can drop as part of the cartel event only from Joey Ultraviolet, Fish Slap, or Tyrone Smalls. The Fish Slap is easily the most busted grenade mod in the game, and that's all because this grenade doesn't explode, instead it slaps you. Because it deals melee damage, there's a lot more to tap into than regular grenade damage, and Amara can plug a lot of cords into the outlet. So much so that this thing will make enemies disappear simply by touching them. And if you want to get the most damage out of it, 
make sure yours is elemental with triple link rolls. The Stinger is a shield every true Amara player should have. You can get it from the Guardian takedown, dropping from Anathema halfway through minus prime. Not only does the Stinger increase your melee damage by 50% when full, but when it breaks it releases a Nova that deals devastating amounts of melee damage. With her almost limitless melee potential, those Novas shake the floor, providing an extra source of melee damage. You'll want one with an action skill star Nightman to trigger those Novas more often, and generally Cryo is the best element, although you can do some fun things with a certain artifact. The last shield I'd recommend is the Revolta, which you can get as part of the Director's Cut, dropping from Sumo around here in Eschaton Row. The Revolta is a must-have shield for everyone, and that's no different for Amara, adding 200% bonus shock damage whenever it depletes, as well as a 50% boost to fire rate. Those bonuses provide a massive increase to your DPS, and you'll want one with an action skill star anointment to have them active as much as possible. For class mods, we open with the Spiritual Driver, a base game artifact dropping on Mayhem 4 or higher from Celestro, who you can find around here in the Tazendir Ruins. This class mod grants Amara that speed equals damage formula we get with Zayn. It increases her gun damage by up to 500% the faster she's moving. But it not only does that, it also applies her action skill element to itself. Now you might think that's bad, but it's actually great when you bring an elemental projector artifact into the mix. When those two things combine, things get out of hand for your enemies incredibly fast. Next, the Phaserker, which can be obtained by defeating the Hag of Fervor from the trial of the same name. The Fade Zerka is a fantastic all-round class mod for Amara, providing her with maximum action skill uptime and all of her many rush stack bonuses. A Siren isn't a Siren when they're not using their Siren abilities, and this allows you to chain one after the other with very little gap between, as well as providing a bonus to weapon damage. It mixes perfectly with Avatar and is suited to every single situation. Last for class mods is the Muse, which drops as part of the Psycho Krieg DLC from Evil Lilith, who you fight around here on top of Castle Crimson. This is the class mod for you if you want to punch enemies to death, thanks to it dropping with Illuminated Fist, providing 75% bonus melee damage, and couple that with a melee damage roll of its own, and that bonus will almost reach 150. That's no small number to scoff at, providing even more damage to her most powerful build. For artifacts, you can't go wrong with the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge, dropping from the Guns Love and Tentacles DLC from the Call of Githian Quest. This artifact simply increases your damage, and all you have to do is shoot stuff, capping at 105% if you shoot enemies consecutively at least 15 times. This artifact covers 90% of Amara builds, helping to make your weapons shine, and it's something every Amara player should have. Moving on to the Unleash the Dragon, a base game artifact that can only be dropped by Owl Dragon Jr. you can find around here in Jacob's Estate. This dragon is unleashed in the form of an ignition, burning your enemies to the core. Any melee slide or slam damage will cause enemies to catch on fire, dealing damage based on the initial hit. When that hit is charged with the punchy, there's not many that will survive the burn. Next up, the Elemental Projector Victory Rush, dropping from Azalea, you can find around here in Jacob's Estate. This artifact is especially suited to its spiritual driver setup with a focus on mindfulness where the self damage procs the elemental boost from the artifact and increases your move speed. That damage boost sits at 129%, and you also get the 18% damage bonus from the victory rush itself, which also applies to move speed. All you need to do is pick an element and run until everything around you is dead. Last for artifacts is the static charge, which has an increased chance to drop from Artemis, you can find around here in Floodmore Basin. 
The static charge is the best artifact to increase your melee damage. Granting your melee attacks 100% bonus shock damage and chaining 25% of that to one or two enemies. You can also increase it furthermore with a stone prefix to add a further 80% elemental damage to those melee attacks. Cryo Stone is the best prefix thanks to its synergy with melee attacks. It's a great artifact especially for mobbing and it'll have you spicing up your melee attacks with an elemental twist.